everybody and welcome back to the backstage at open highway podcast my name is john henry and this is episode 23 sat down this week with jay Scherter from the regional arts commission st louis arts doing amazing things to help st louis based artists venues festivals projects we discuss a lot of things we wrap up music at the intersection evolution kind of the close of the festival season here in st louis and we also discuss the st louis murals project which i'd highly recommend you check out Um, a bunch of local artists have put murals at different spots all over st louis city they're unique they're beautiful it's little things like that that i think gives st louis its own little uh, identity separates us from other places. Definitely worth checking out. And you can even, if you're so inclined, you can get a map and you can, um, you could check them all out. So we discussed that. It's, it's a, uh, it's a good conversation. He's, Jay's a, a good guy and a very enthusiastic, he's very enthusiastic about the city of St. Louis and all of the art and artists that comes out of it. And we are lucky to have him and his organization. So check that out. I wanted to talk to you about something new we have going on here. It's the Exit 209 music series. We're putting on three shows in conjunction with Four Hands and Route 66 Dispensary. That's Route R-O-O-T. It's a pun, people. We're putting on the Exit 209 Music Series. It starts this Friday, October 18th, at Four Hands Downtown. So here's how this is going to work. Four Hands has this building that's connected to their main brewery downtown, and when it's opened and cleared, it creates the garage, and we're having three shows there this fall into the winter with three great bands and it is starting this Friday, October 18th with Mom's Kitchen. It's totally free. We are an independent local business, Four Hands are as well. And so we're happy to work with them. They've been great with us through the festival and even back in the day when putting on, you know, smaller shows when I was just a boy. <laughs> they they were great with supporting us with production costs and things like that and always great with hospitality drinks and beer and just a really cool company and we're happy to be working with them that will be linked in the comments below would love for you to come out and join us for that and i hope you enjoy the interview here with jay from st louis arts we go over a bunch of different things but the enthusiasm that he and his organization have is is just a really great thing to see, and it makes you just want to keep investing into St. Louis and St. Louis arts. So I hope you enjoy that interview. Check it out. That's how it goes, though. You know, it's it's been a long week. It's been a long week, and we are back with Jay Scherter from St. Louis Arts. How are you, sir? Great. It's uh it's been a busy couple of months, but a fun kind of busy. So we we love that kind of busy. Yeah. We were talking off camera here a second ago that festival season is kind of coming to a close, but we had a couple of really good ones here towards the tail end. Uh music at the intersection and evolution. Uh did you attend? How was your experience? I, I did, did, I did. Um, you know, it's funny, someone complained on social media. Uh, a couple of days ago, they're like, why don't they spread these things out? Like, you know, there's so many things happening at the same time, but you know, we're in Missouri we're we're in the St. Louis region where it's yeah. very hot and miserable during the summer. So it's, you kind of have to pack it in and it's hard sometimes because you have to decide between a lot of things yeah. like at the same time, which I suppose is a good problem to have, but no, it was great. You know, music at the intersection got a lot of national press this year. I mean, they did last year too, um, but just a very unique sort of festival that, you know, um, yeah. really features a lot of great local acts. Um, you know, this year their national act Shaka Khan drew a heck of a crowd. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
you know, big boy from Outcast. That yeah. was fun to listen to for me from my youth. Um, being able to to listen to some of those songs was really good. Trombone Shorty put on an incredible show. Yeah. Um, so it was, you know, and it's right there in the Grand Center Arts District. So it, it's got a, a different kind of feel because you are like right in the middle of the city. And so there was a, a really good crowd, really good vibe that was happening at Music at the Intersection. And then Evolution Festival, which is in Forest Park, um, just wrapped up at the end of September. And boy, they had they had a lot of things happen that really was completely out of their control. Yeah. You know, they had Blondie in the lineup. Blondie got sick, so they had to replace her. Uh, they replaced Blondie with Billy Idol. And I got to say, Billy Idol was incredible. Like, I heard he was awesome, yeah. Coming out, you know, he's 70-something years old, talking about his grandkids and, you know, <laughs> yeah. just no shirt on, just rocking it. Yeah. So that was really fun. And then, you know, Jane's Addiction <laughs> yeah, to was... a fight on stage uh, at a previous concert. And then they broke up and stopped all their, their concerts. So they replaced that with Tom Morello of Rage Against the Machine and, and Audio Slave fame. And really, he basically did a giant set of guitar stuff. So it was just different, um, you know, just a different kind of feel. Um, but, you know, they had some other acts in there as well with L. King and Sunvolt, who's got local ties. Um mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it was a really good festival, uh, you know, both drawing thousands and thousands of people, bringing them, you know, to St. Louis. A lot of those festivals, you know, it's about 80 percent people in town yeah, and about 20 percent of people from out of town. And so we love having those out of town folks coming in and staying in our hotels and experiencing St. Louis. Um, you know, we did a couple ticket giveaways in different markets. Um you know, one was from Muncie, Indiana. If you're a Parks and Recreation fan, the show, yeah, yeah. Muncie, Indiana is a is a town that appears a lot in the show. It's a real place. And we had someone come from Muncie, Indiana um, to experience uh, the music of the Intersection Festival. And I mean, she just had a blast. You know, she had so much fun. So everyone that comes to St. Louis has a blast and these festivals are just a great reason for it. Now those are big festivals that have national acts and, you know, people travel in, but Mm -hmm. you know, some of my favorite festivals are the ones that certainly tend to lean more on local crowds. Like this last weekend we had Grove Fest, um, which is right in the heart of the Grove. And, and, you know, I love the Grove. It's just such a cool, vibrant place. And uh, BJ, the Chicago kid, was the headliner, but they had a lot of other really cool stuff Um, and, uh, you know, a ton of vendors and, you know, a kid's area. Like a lot of these festivals embrace having children there because people my age, you know, I'm 39. I've got two kids. You have kids. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to be able to go places with it. I want to have to always find a sitter to be able to enjoy a festival. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so Grove Fest was this weekend, this last weekend, but so was Artica, which is a really bizarre fun of it. Um, if people have never been, it's it's a, a live art sort of experience where much like Burning Man, they always set something on fire at the end of it all. Um, well, that's always cool. Always, which is always fun. Um, but there was like, you know, three different things happening, four different things happening this past weekend. But, you know, I love festival season. You know, really, it's like August to October in the St. Louis region. And there's just so much to do. And they're not all the same. You know, it's not like a a fill in the blank type of festival. Like you're going to expect the same thing at each one. You know, a lot of them do have a a unique personality. And so stlouisarts.org did sponsor some of them this year. Um, You know, had a presence there, had some great conversations with people from out of town, people from in town. Um, But uh, yeah, it's just, you know, it's it's lovely to see, you know, things coming alive this time of the year. And I think if people aren't going to it, they're missing out. Yeah, and like the weekend of evolution too, there was uh, the rain came before the fest. Mm -hmm. Billy Joel and uh, Sting were in town, which was like a, you know, massive stadium gig. So it was like, oh, yeah. There was tons of tons of, of music yeah. in um, just massive outdoor gatherings in in the city that weekend. Yeah, and we draw such really cool names and and different you know sort of bands that come through here. And and you know that's what I'd say of of you know anyone that you know thinking about music. You you often think of Nashville. You know that's our closest one. Memphis as well. Yeah, 
you can see some really cool up and coming acts. But you and I both know you being a music promoter with Open Highway Presents and thinking about local um, presenters like GMO Presents, um, you know, um, the Townsend Agency. Um, you know, these folks are bringing in some people that very well could be the next big thing. Right. You look at Vintage Vinyl, Vintage Vinyl. Let me yeah. switch that. You look at Vintage Vinyl and, you know, the amount of people that have been through that place. Yeah. Last, you know, few decades, like Mumford and Sons did a concert like right outside. Like yeah, I was they, there for that. Were you really? Oh. Uh, it was crazy. Yeah. You know, but they, they have these acts that are not super big at the time and then like explode. And I feel like St. Louis has a lot of that, that, you know, people just kind of write it off. But, you know, they really should check out the mo- local music scene. We have so many cool you know, unique venues like Venice Cafe or the Whiskey Ring or, you know, Atomic Cowboy now just opening in the Grove, yeah. uh, which I did take a peek in when I was down there. And it's a really cool space. They've yeah, that's a, a great spot. Outdoor stage. So I love the music scene here. And, and I feel like people think they have to travel to be able to find that next big thing. You know, I know God, so many people go to Nashville and, you know go on Broadway and they're like, Oh, I saw this guy playing his guitar or whatever. Like, he's so awesome. I wrote down his name just in case he makes it big. Yeah. Great. And I want people to do that, but it's like, you Mm -hmm. know, you don't have to go to Nashville and do that. Like you could literally pop into a number of places every single weekend and, you know, could very much find the next big thing. You know, we've got some great artists like Maddie Schnell and Beth Bombera and, and, um, you know, even in the hip hop scene, like Brock Seals or Mastermind. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, it's just, you know, I was, I'm always amazed at the people and the bands that you see in this town that just have such incredible talent. But, you know, you know, you're a musician. Like, yeah. a lot of people out there you're competing against. Yeah, and it's becoming, it's like um, instant gratification society. It's like you have, you have to rely on clicks and... um I was I was hanging out with a band on Friday and and it was like a big nationally touring band and they were telling me that like so much of their future is predicated on like that next clip that they put out on TikTok for the next step of their career and it's like uh you know you got to adapt to the times obviously but it's just you know when you have a big body of work it would be great if you were judged on that as opposed to just a TikTok clip but <laughs> That's yeah. where we are right now. And, you know, like, I think real artists make, you know, the, the artists that are going to be legacy and, and, and stick around for forever. I mean, at the, at the heart of that is the songwriting or, or the performance, you know, it's, so I think that comes out, but yeah, I mean, there's so much noise that you're, you're competing against and, and everybody's yeah. good at it. Yeah. I, I, I do feel bad for anybody that's trying to make it in any industry, you know, that is part of the creative industry because it is, very much like that. And, you know, in the Regional Arts Commission of St. Louis, which, you know, we're the largest public funder of art in the region, you know, we give money to real artists, you know, you want to do something, here's a check. Um, You know, I I feel bad for a lot of these folks that, you know, they do have a website, um, but that's it. Like, they're not, they're not doing stuff on social media. You have to be doing it. Yeah. They need to be doing, thinking the art is going to sell itself and it should, it should sell. But right. it just, you have to do so much more now than you used to have to do to be able to get yourself noticed. And yeah. all these social media influencers, which don't get me started on that, but yeah, right. <laughs> no, there's a lot of pushback against influencers right now, which I'm actually enjoying. Um, and some of them are great. Like some of them are, are truly like telling you things that I yeah. want to like showing you experiences that are incredible without, Mm -hmm. you know, product plugs and things like that. But, you know, these people never shut off. Like they can't, like they they are completely produced. And that's no different with artists and stuff now. Like you're, you're constantly having to produce on top of everything else you're Mm -hmm. doing. And that just seems exhausting. It's exhausting at times on the promotion level, too, because you have to create content there, too. You have to stick out. You have to, you know, I go to shows and capture video and try to put, you know, I put together these little videos of stuff just so people are more familiar with the types of shows that are happening here and what the room is like and what the vibe is like. But one thing ends and you you don't catch your breath. You start with the next thing, you know. Yeah. And it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. 
and you see it everywhere, you know, like uh, comedians, you know, it's it's how many times I've gone on social media and, you know, you just see mm -hmm. clips, of all these people. And it's great that I saw the clip of fill in the blank. Right. But like, am I going to remember his or her name? Like yeah. they going to stick in my brain of I should check out that Netflix special or wait a minute. I have two kids. I can't check out any Netflix special because I don't have more than five minutes to myself. So how do you compete? Right. In that world? Right. And, and it is tough. And I think that's what a lot of people fail to understand as opposed to a quote unquote regular career where you go to work and it's nine to five and you come home and then you're done. Yeah. It's not like that. Yeah. artists, you know, are having to do so much more work yeah. than, than a lot of people because their world is online and fighting in that space is just crazy. And let's not forget about AI basically disrupting yeah. thing that we know on top of all that. Yeah. Which is yeah. It's tough to be independent anything right now. I mean, just the the you know, the bigger companies are gobbling up stuff and and um you have to content create. And I mean, if you can figure out a way to do it or if you have a good, you know, a friend who can help you when you're starting, that's great, but you know, it's it's time consuming to to shoot and edit and you and you just have to be good at everything at, at the moment it seems like. Yeah, and if you, you know, are thinking, well, maybe I can pay somebody to do this. Like oh, that would Eat away all of your money. Mm -hmm. uh, not that the people aren't good at what they do, but uh, to have to pay someone to manage your yeah. social, create content is thousands and thousands of dollars that you likely don't have. So yeah, it is tough. It's tough for artists out there. But I mean, you know, that's why with with our organization, with the Regional Arts Commission um, of St. Louis, why it's so important for us to support local artists in the community to be able to help them in any way that, you know, they deem the most important. Um, I think I've spoken about this before, but, you know, we had an, uh, an artist, Ryan Marquez, who's a great local musician, uh, does some great work. You know, he wanted to go out to LA to network, to do professional development, and then bring all that information back to St. Louis and, you know, spread it around the artist community, not go out to L.A. to figure out how he can move to L.A. and further his career. No, he wanted to be in St. Louis and wanted to bring resources back yeah. and better his career and, and the careers of others. You know, we, you know, support people that are photographers like, look, to stay up with the times, I have to keep buying more and more space because pictures take up a lot of space. You know, then, OK, we'll we'll give you some funding for that as well. You know, everything costs money and, you know, you don't have uh, an organization, you know, a business that has a budget like, well, we have five thousand dollars for equipment this year. It's like, OK, well, I need this. And and you're you're in the budget that year. I mean, you're paying for everything yourself. And that is boy, it's a tough life. But, you know, God love all of our artists, because without them, I mean, just imagine the world we'd live in just imagine what St. Louis would look like with all, without all these passionate people um, that are, you know, finding every dollar they can, you know, yeah, and to, to create and, and, you know, where it'd be so much easier to just stop, you know what I mean? Yeah, it'd be yeah, so much easier to just say, I can't do this anymore. I'm going to do it on the side and find me a nine to five, um, you know, but they don't, they don't throw in the towel. Like they keep fighting and, like I said, good on them because, you know, it, it, it's amazing they do it. And I can't imagine a world where they don't. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think for people that have skin in the game, you know, what the artists and the promoters and or whoever, you know, that are doing this independently, it's more like a vocation, you know, it's yeah. like you're, you're, you're past the point of um, whether you like it or not. It's just, this is who you are and this is what you're going to do. And cause you have to do it. Yeah. You know? And, um, and, you know, as we're talking about clips every time, you know, the second time we've had you on the pod, you're you're giving me so many clip options right now, like to go through. I could just chop these up. Yeah, I mean, um, that's my my old TV background uh, coming in handy of, of uh, you know, my 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 life is just a series of sound bites. Sometimes I feel. Yeah, well, keep it up uh, on, on podcasts <laughs> such as these because it, it does. Help I just want to make life easier. easier, John. That's that's what it comes down to. I'm just trying to make your life a little bit easier. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're all just out here clout chasing, just looking for clout. Right. <laughs> right. Um. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of uh, 
as we get into kind of the Halloween season now, are there any things, you know, any events here in St. Louis that you're particularly looking forward to? Um, you know, I don't, I, I can't think of any on the top of my head, but what I will say is we're very excited that we just finished the St. Louis mural project. Yeah. Tell us about that. Oh man. It's, it's been incredible. Uh, just the amount of, uh, you know, media coverage we've gotten, just the amount of, uh, traffic online to our, our website about it. So basically, you know, we set out to create 28 murals by 28 artists across the city of St. Louis. You know, yeah. we've got 14 wards, you know, much like, you know, voting precinct type yeah. things. Um, so we did one in every single ward. Very cool. Uh, which is super awesome. Um, yeah, it was, it, it's truly incredible. And the number of artists, you know, the 28, we wanted to do two per ward. And the diversity that we have with the artists themselves, with the type of art they do, you know, with the themes of each of these, it's truly incredible. Yeah. And so we started basically in late May, early June, and we finished these by the end of September. So, I mean, this was a fast timeline of, of getting all of these murals done in a very short amount of time. And um, we paid for this by by uh, utilizing federal pandemic funding that we got from the city of St. Louis, which is why we couldn't do it in the county. We would have loved to have done it in St. Louis County. It just it didn't happen. And, and that's OK. Um, you know, we would have loved to have been able to do it. But, you know, the city got some really beautiful pieces. My favorite, I think it's hard to pick a favorite. I just gravitate towards this one every time is uh, Fatou Kane, local artist did one of George Washington Carver on the side of the George Washington Carver house. Oh, in cool. And it's just, it's, it's very blue and yellowy. Um, and it's just a huge mural of his face. And there's a message there and I can't remember it, but it's a very hopeful kind of message. Just a beautiful mural. Um, you know, one the other day was the backdrop for the national night out of that. It was uh -huh. like, we're, come into the community and you have you know like barbecues and and lots of stuff well the, one of the murals was sort of the backdrop for the event oh very cool yeah I think to myself if we wouldn't have painted this mural would they have done that event there you know i like to think that they chose that location because it's like we have this beautiful new mural you know and a lot of people like these muralists and the communities are now like well, we need to clean up everything around this mural like we want yeah. people to come view this experience it let's do stuff here so we should clean up the whole area. So it's it's uh, driving that sort of change. In That's these cool. Um, you know, Kababi Bayak, who is arguably one of the more famous um, artists from the St. Louis region, uh, does a lot of really interesting work. You've probably seen it, um, maybe not knowing it's Kababi. But, you know, the mural he did is the biggest one he's ever done. And he's done a lot of murals. So like, you know, to say that that, you know, we were we helped him create the biggest mural he's ever done. Um, another artist, Brock Seals, had never used a lift before in doing art. And his is like way up in the air. on yeah. the side. Of and so that one was really cool. Lisa Thalhammer uh, did one in the Grove. That's this beautiful uh, mural that says love. And she used the community to paint it. You know, she painted oh, it. Cool. Uh, too, but like calling all community members come in here and 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 make your mark and so the artists are all different ways and they're truly beautiful and and for some of these neighborhoods truly uplifting um because again it just wasn't downtown um you know it just wasn't um you know in a, in a couple different wards i mean they're in all parts of the city and so we have just again received so much positive feedback from this mural project it's clear, so clear that the people of St. Louis are dying for something like this. They are wanting us to, you know, let's beautify the city with public art. Let's take some of these places that need some love and let's give them some love. So to be able to spend almost a million dollars to help in that effort is, I mean, really, it's I've been at the Regional Arts Commission of St. Louis now for almost three years. And I mean, this project, which... To be fair, I had little to do with, um, you know, we, we certainly are, are helping spread the word about it and send out news releases and putting stuff on our social media. But as far as the people behind the scenes that 
found the buildings, you know, created the artist selection process, you know, stayed on top of the artist to make sure this stuff got done. Yeah. Like uh, they're, they're the heroes. Uh, Tracy Morgan um, with our staff uh, did so much of this work, Charlie Bosco, uh, Greg Harris, um, and then my team, Jason Chipkowski, Savannah Babington, they did so much work uh, to push this out there and to let people know about it. And I mean, yeah, just the response has been incredible. And, you know, I'd love to do this every year. I'd love to put 28 murals, you know, all over the city of St. Louis every year. So if anyone's got a million dollars, they would like to give me every single year. Uh, I would love to make that happen. Well, we'll see if anybody writes in. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's been exciting. You know, we also just gave out $5 million in that same federal pandemic funding money um, to help 21 organizations in St. Louis bring tourists to St. Louis. You know, obviously during the pandemic, no one was traveling. No one was going to shows. Right, the- yeah. Down, you know, all those sort of things. So um, yeah, $5 million. I mean, you know, that can help a lot of people. Some people got 500,000, some people got 20,000, um, you know, just depending on who they were, the need, how they could use it. But, you know, we're excited to see things to come because that's a long, that's a long term thing, you know, like, Uh, Some of these folks had not been able to hire a marketing person since the pandemic. This funding allowed them to get a marketing person in place, to be able to even have a baseline of of things. You know, some people have the infrastructure in place. This will allow them to spread their message a lot further than what they were doing. So we're doing everything we can to try to get people to come to St. Louis, to try to make St. Louis a better place, to make it, you know, more beautiful and, you know, we love our city. It doesn't mean it doesn't have problems. Every city has problems. Um, but, you know, we we spend way too much time talking negatively about ourselves, which is funny because if anyone else does it, we get mad at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dare talk about St. Louis that way. But, you know, how many times I've heard about like, oh, yeah, my Uber driver pretty much told me to go nowhere and to stay in my hotel. And it's like, well, that's not helpful. Yeah, um, thanks, Uber. You know, where if I run into anybody, I'm like, I'm, down. I'm in St. Louis all the time. Like, you know, it's yeah. it's a, just be vigilant because you're in a city. Yeah. Yeah. It just needs to be scared because there's so much to do. Yeah. And crime is going down. It, it is. The, and the perception of it is not matching the actual results. And that's a problem. And it's frustrating because it's like, I mean, it's just fear. But um, it is. And, you know, mis- hopefully people start to get the, the word out about that. People just don't want to believe it. Like crime's down, going down. No, it's not. Yeah, no, it is. And like it's objectively going down. It's measurable. There are less. There are numbers. Yeah, <laughs> back this up. And uh, you know the whole city county divide. I mean, good lord, we can talk about that forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. It's doing a lot of things right now to try to improve itself. There's a lot of organizations out there, um, you know, and businesses that are doing everything they can to improve this area. Laclede Landing down downtown. Yeah, you know, yeah. It used to be the place. It was the spot. And then it and then everything died. Yeah, yeah. Um and um you know they just opened up a new par- pocket parks down there with disc golf and art displays. You know, they're they're holding parties down there, at least they they had for the Battle Hawks games. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, like they're trying to revitalize that. There's a group of people behind it that are doing everything they can. And, you know, no one asked them to. They decided right. they need to. And so there are a lot of people out there doing amazing things to bring St. Louis back up to where we know it needs to be. And and that gives me hope. Is it going to be done in five years? No. May, you know, is it going to take 10, 15? Mm-hmm. Maybe. I don't know. What I do know is I do think we are going in the right direction in a lot of ways. I mean, politics completely out of out of this conversation. Just the people that are in St. Louis that truly the care about, do shit. Yeah. you know, the business people that could be anywhere else. Um, Evolution Music Festival, we were talking about. Folks behind that are contemporary productions. Um, they do work all over the country, all over the world. And they could probably be based in Chicago, L.A., New York. They love St. Louis, so they're here. 
And I think that speaks volumes for a company of that size and influence to say, this is where we want to be. And you see a lot of developers, you know, Union Station. Yeah, I mean, I remember that in its heyday. And then again, it died. Yeah. And, then, you know, people that cared and saw a cool opportunity said, let's build this thing back up. I don't yeah. think it's yeah. dead. I, I think we just need to, to put in some life. Now, City SC soccer team certainly helps uh being right next door but that also is a thing that you know the enterprise uh family um you know decided we want this soccer team we're yeah. going to public funding and we're going to make this a thing because st louis deserves it so mm -hmm. a lot of hope and i love every bit of st louis again it has its problems but i'm from a town of three thousand. it had problems <laughs> yeah. you, know, I, you yeah. know so it's just funny how short-sighted people are as if you know, wherever they live or are from or whatever, just was, you know, perfect in some regard. Like, well, you know, absolutely. Have this yeah. or this. It's like, yeah, but they had other things that are equally yeah. plain or whatever. Like, yeah. uh, you know, just you funny. look at the 90s in a positive way now in retrospect, and then you look at the crime from then, and it was oh, yeah. so much higher than it is now. It was yeah. so, so much higher. And it's like, um, it doesn't check out in your brain because of maybe the period of life you were in or whatever. But, yeah, I agree with you. I think we're going in the right direction. I think there's a lot of really good things on the horizon, um, and they're already happening in, in a lot of instances. So that's great. I think so, too. I think so, too. Cool. Well, I think this is a perfect way to wrap it up. And yeah. I wanted to give you the last word here of where I wanted to ask you where people should go to check out what you're up to and if there was possibly a map with all of the murals yes there is yeah. so we i mean we've really developed the the st louis mural project website um so you go to st louisarts.org which is our arts tourism website um and then you'll just go uh i think it's things to do and then the st louis mural projects right there but we do have a map of every single one of them so you can you know if you want to check them out and yeah little road trip get some people in the car and drive around then you can easily plot where you want to go we have uh we're coming out with them because we we documented every single one of them, interviewed every single artist. So we've been pumping out these videos and we're going to do at least one a week, two a week um, on our Instagram account, which is just St. Louis Arts. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, you need to check them out. And we have photo galleries of all of them as well. Perfect. So, I mean, it, it really gives you the full experience of what these things are like, how they were created, where the ideas came up for yeah. You know, but it it really you need to see them in person because you know, especially some of these larger ones. Um, there's one by this artist Nika, and it looks like a giant underwater kind of coral reef sort of thing, and it's huge. And I love that one too because it's just it's you know otherworldly. So like being next to it, like you feel yeah, you know, like this is kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, go to our website, stlouisarts.org. You can check out all the, the cool stuff that we've collected for this project. And uh, yeah, go go check them out and reach out to the artists and tell them how awesome they did because yeah. they, really are, uh, they really are impressive. Well, Jay Scherter from St. Louis Arts, thank you. Yes, my pleasure as always. My pleasure. We'd like to have you as a regular guest because you fill us in on things like this. I love it. Louis. St. Louis. Always happy to talk. And I uh, hope you have a good rest of the day. Thank you. All right. Thanks, John. All right. Take care. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. He's going to be a regular guest every, every little bit. We'll get Jay on to tell us what's going on outside of this Americana world, rock and roll world. But I highly recommend to check out the, the murals that were painted. Uh, really great stuff. Um, a, lot of, a lot of love went into that. And time. And just one more reminder. Come hang out with us on Friday night, October 18th. It's the start of a free music series we're kicking off at Four Hands Downtown. It's the Exit 209 Music Series, presented by Open Highway, Four Hands, and Route 66. Thrilled to be working with both of them. Mom's Kitchen is the band that's going to be kicking it off this Friday, so come on out. Have a cold one, or don't. Do your thing. Nah, have a cold one. Support the business, whatever. Appreciate you joining us for episode 23 of the Backstage at Open Highway podcast. I am your host, John Henry. Take care. Peace. At the Backstage at Open Highway podcast.